Hello my little kiddie winks. Well I've had no requests for Bible stories this week. So I found this neat little book that's got three stories from the Old Testament in it. So I'm going to read them all and I think you might know, we'll certainly know one of them, but you might know the rest. The last one is one of my favourite books of the Bible. Anyway, let's see if you recognise the stories. This is the story of Noah's Ark. Long ago there lived a good man named Noah. God loved Noah. Other people were not good. They did bad things to one another. God decided to flood the earth to stop the bad people. God gave Noah a plan. God said, make a big boat. Take food and your family inside. I will send you birds, animals, and every creature. I am going to make a flood, but I will keep you safe. Noah loved God and did what he asked. Noah built the big boat. He put his family inside. They put all the food they would need on the boat. Then God sent the animals to Noah. Noah put them in the ark. The rain fell for 40 days. The earth flooded and Noah took care of the animals. They lived on the ark for almost a year and God kept his promise. They were all safe. God sent the wind to dry up the water. It took a long, long time for the water to go down. Noah kept waiting for dry land. Then one day, God spoke to Noah. God said, Come out of the ark now. Bring the birds and the animals and the creatures, he said. Then God made a new promise. I will not flood the earth again when the people are bad, God said. See my rainbow? It's the sign of my promise. Can you see all the animals? You notice there's two of every kind, a male and a female, a male and a female monkey and rabbits and cats and parrots and elephants and zebras or zebras depending where you live and bears and cows and giraffes. <gasps> Look there's even pandas on there. I wonder how many other kinds of animals you can think of that would have been on that boat. We sometimes refer that boat to as an ark. It's a good story, that one. One we all know. Let's see what the next story is. Gideon's Battle A man named Gideon heard an angel. Gideon, said the angel, God is with you. He wants you to save his people. Gideon said, How can I? My men are farmers, not fighters. The angel said, You can fight, Gideon. Ask the Lord, How do I know you want me, God? Show me a sign. Is it you talking to me? God shown Gideon signs, and Gideon believed. Gideon called his men, meet me by the water, we will fight our enemy. Many men came, God saw all the men. You have too many, God said, keep only 300 men. Gideon did what God said, he told his men to get in line. Gideon gave each man a horn he also gave each man a jar and a torch. Gideon said, now we are ready. Gideon led his 300 men. They circled the enemy camp. Gideon said, do what I do. I will blow my horn, then you blow your horns. Then yell, for God and Gideon. The men blew their horns. Toot, toot! 
they yelled. For Gordon Gideon! They broke their jars. Crash! They lit their torches and the enemy ran crying. God helped Gideon save his people. Wow. That must have been a very loud noise. 300 people blowing horns all at the same time. Mm. Our last story is about Queen Esther. Esther was a pretty young girl. The king was looking for a bride. Will you be my wife? Yes, I will be your queen. Esther was happy, but soon her cousin Mordecai spoke to her. Mordecai had raised Esther. He was like a father to her. He said, go ahead and marry the king, but keep it a secret that you are one of God's peoples. Promise me. She promised. A man named Haman worked for the king. Haman asked the king to make a law. The law said that everyone had to bow down to Haman. He tricked the king into passing this law. Then Haman said, if someone doesn't bow down, let's get rid of them. The king agreed. Mordecai heard about this and he wanted to bow only to God. So did his cousin and God's people. The news passed through town. People heard that everyone was bowed to Haman. God's people knew they could not do this. The new law would get rid of people that didn't bow. Mordecai sent a note to his cousin. It said, you must save your people. You are made queen for this time. She sent a note back and it said, I will talk to my husband. Pray for me. Esther prayed the king would understand. She made a meal. Haman was invited. Then she went to the king. He was happy to see her. Please come to dinner, Esther said. Later, Esther said, please save my people. Her husband asked, who would hurt them? Esther pointed to Haman. So the king got rid of Haman. Esther's bravery saved her people. Wow, he must have been a scary man. But God was with her and his people and they remained faithful to God and God saved them through putting people in their way. Making Esther the queen was just what they needed to help save them all. There's obviously lots more to this little story, but that's the bare bones of it. You can always read it in your Bible and see what else you find out. Anyway, until next time. Bye.